Invisible Ones, the voices of the missing. In this episode, we'll do a deep dive into whether Chicago is home to a serial killer and what local lawmakers are doing to help find our missing girls and women. Say their names. Rio Renee Holyfield, Hazel Lewis, Teresa Bunn, Margaret E. Williams, Charlene Miller, Latoya Banks, Shantia Smith, and Gwendolyn Williams. Gwendolyn Williams was the eldest of six children born on October 6, 1957. In 1965, her family moved to the South Side near 35th Street by what was then known as Comiskey Park, home to the Chicago White Sox. Her younger sisters remember Gwendolyn being an amazing big sister, always cooking, babysitting, and protecting them from the mean streets of Chicago. Gwen was an avid dancer. She loved music and attending church. She constantly reminded her sisters about getting an education and the importance of doing what is right. All three of her sisters say they are proud products of Gwen's protection and love. But what happened to Gwen? On Wednesday, June 12, 2002, Gwendolyn Williams was found strangled and covered in blood. Her body had been discarded behind a dollar store in the 4800 block of North Sheridan Road. Investigators found semen and skin beneath her nails, evidence that Gwen had fought with her attacker. She was only 44 years old. Gwen's family, like so many, has never been the same since the moment they discovered she was dead. It's especially hard to know that your loved one brutally suffered death. Thomas Hargrove is the founder of MAP, the Murder Accountability Project, a nonprofit research organization based in Alexandria, Virginia. The project studies homicides as clusters, covering different cities across the country through a set of algorithms. The algorithms have concluded that the murders in Chicago are the work of one or more serial killers due to the patterns and manners in which women have been found. Many have been found the same way Gwendolyn Williams was found in 2002, lifeless, half naked, and disposed of in an abandoned building. In the Chicago series, it was really quite striking that almost all of these victims were murdered out of doors, or at least that's where their body was recovered. And uh, that's unusual. I mean, half the time a murder victim is discovered indoors. These women were all found out of doors. They were found in abandoned buildings, empty alleyways, trash cans. In several cases, the trash cans were set on fire. There really were striking similarities to these cases, a very strong pattern. I like to say that when you assemble all of the narratives to these cases, it just screams serial murder. Before Hargrove drew his conclusion, he used his algorithm to help police solve cases of the missing and murdered in a heavily black populated city nearby. We've built what is the most complete accounting of homicide available anywhere. We worked for months trying to develop an algorithm, a series of mathematical steps that would produce a solution that is to identify clusters of murders that have a common killer. What we found that was successful was to cluster the homicides according to the location, the county where the murder occurred, the victim's sex, and the method of killing. Hargrove's algorithm determined that there was a serial killer in Gary, Indiana. One of the first clusters that we identified was in Gary, Indiana, a cluster of 15 strangulations of women that were not cleared. We started to investigate the cases and put names and narratives to those 15 bits of information that were in the FBI files. They all sound eerily the same. Most of the women were in their 20s or 30s and were found strangled in abandoned properties or empty alleyways. We tried to have a conversation with the Gary Police Department. They would talk at first, and then they concluded that there were no unsolved serial killings in Gary, Indiana. Since our interview in early August of 2021, there has been an update involving a convicted serial killer who was close to home. Darren Dion Van recently told detectives that he had killed many more victims in Illinois than in Northwest Indiana, 
where in 2014 he admitted to strangling seven women in a 10-month period. In most cases, he left their bodies in abandoned properties in Gary. Van's admissions have sparked new inquiries by Chicago police and the FBI into whether he is responsible for any of the 50 unsolved strangulations of Chicago women whose bodies were recovered in abandoned buildings, empty alleyways, and large trash receptacles on the south and west sides from 2001 to 2018. Even though the Murder Accountability Project's algorithm has proven successful across the U.S. and Darren Van has confessed to killing women in Gary and Chicago, the Chicago Police Department remains reluctant to officially admit that there was a serial killer or killers in our city. Hargrove explains why. Yeah, there's a natural inclination in law enforcement not to want to make a public declaration that a serial killer is suspected. Part of the reason is they don't want to cause panic, but also it becomes a, a bit of a political nightmare for them. The mayor will want regular updates on the serial killer investigation, and there's a tremendous amount of media pressure on the police to solve the case. Truth be told, uh, serial cases are quite difficult to solve. You're dealing with a killer who, by definition, is pretty effective at killing and getting away with it. So who will the city of Chicago listen to? What will make Chicago act and find the answers to the 51 local women who were murdered or are missing? There are some trying to make a difference on both the local and federal levels. Last year, Illinois State Representative Cam Buckner introduced new legislation to address violence against women by creating a missing and murdered Chicago Woman Task Force. House Bill 3932 would create policy solutions to better address violence against women and girls in Chicago. In 2019 and once again in 2020, I introduced a bill that would create the task force on missing and murdered Chicago women. It provided for the composition of a task force appointments and meetings to really get and address the issue that we have seen around uh, the city of Chicago uh, when it comes to the, the large number of obviously women and teenage girls who have either been confirmed murdered or missing without any resolution to their case. Another champion on the front line of this issue is First District Congressman Bobby Rush. In August, the congressman sent a letter to the Attorney General Merrick Garland and Christopher Ray of the FBI. Rush is also calling for the creation of a task force to address the backlog of unsolved missing persons and murder cases, not just in Chicago, but across the country. In the letter, Congressman Rush addressed the 20th anniversary of missing sisters Diamond and Tianda Bradley. The Bradley sisters have not been seen since disappearing from their Bronzeville neighborhood on July 6, 2001. In the next episode of The Invisible Ones, you will hear from their aunt and Congressman Bobby Rush, who is challenging the Biden administration to not only take up the cause of missing girls, but to do it through the lens of race. This is Candace McCollum. We'll see you on the next episode.